Today I'm here with Gary Friedman. He's a scientist, a lecturer, a photographer, extraordinaire. Gary has done some interesting things, but one of the things he's done is decide to write books on Sony cameras. Gary, welcome. Thank you. You know, I have a question that may seem a little basic, but why Sony? That's a good question, especially since everybody else in the world is shooting with another brand. There you go. I grew up shooting with Minolta, mm -hmm. starting from the 1960s. My oldest camera was an SRT 101, all mechanical camera. And Minolta had a lot of innovations. I love the brand. Soon, Sony bought Minolta. Mm -hmm. All my lenses worked. All the flashes worked. <laughs> it made sense. I like Sony now because they're the most innovative company uh, in photography oh. in existence today. Okay. Yeah. Um, everybody else tried to graph video onto their DSLR architecture, which couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Because in order to autofocus, the mirror has to be up. But right. in order to shoot video, the mirror has to be the other way. Okay. The opposite of up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that was the issue. All right. Sony solved it in a very clever way. They had a semi-transparent mirror. So the mirror is always down and always up simultaneously. Uh -huh. So you can have you go to autofocus. You can also see what you're shooting. And if it's going to be too dark or too light beforehand, you can see if your color balance is white, right? And you don't have to keep doing this to see if your shot came out all right. Sure. Because you can see what sure. you just shot inside the viewfinder. There's a lot of synergy with this new architecture. Nobody else is doing it. Sony is about a generation ahead. Wow. And it's, it's exciting to be, to, be, to be working with these cameras. Clearly. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question. Are you aware you're one of the best-selling authors on Lulu.com? I've heard that. I don't Have believe you? it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Most of my customers actually download the PDF file, which is much more reasonable, and you can just read it on your iPad and your e-reader and, and, and everything else. But people always ask me what, what makes my book so, so much different than everybody else's. And I don't have a good answer for that. But what I can tell you is I remember back when I was an engineering student, and I remember how dry and, and horrible the textbooks were. Devout of humor, and they were hired people who couldn't really explain anything. And I think, again, people tell me that I bring a unique set of skills mm -hmm. to the table. I used to work for NASA, so I understand the technical end. Um, I'm a very good communicator, which is rare for engineers, apparently. Uh, and I, I enjoy... To sharing what I know with other people, and I just I really love taking pictures. So, you know, apparently, people tell me they read the book, they can feel my love for the subject coming out. It's rare for a textbook. It has to be way better than reading some of the manuals I've read. Yeah, well, the, the consumer ones, the ones that came with your camera or DVD player or whatever it is, the consumer electronics co uh, uh, business in general understands that people don't read manuals, so they have a mantra: say it in as few words as possible. Then they translated it back into English. So, right. so you have that. And it's either translated by somebody who either doesn't understand English or doesn't understand photography. Um, or that, both. Or both. Yeah. So that's the way things are now. Uh, it's, it's a good opportunity for someone to sit down with you, hold your hand, and say, here's how it works, and here are the examples, and, and uh, I feel that there's, there's a need for this kind of a thing. Well, let me ask you this question. What's the one question that you hate the most? Hate the most? Hate the most. <clears throat> Gee, those are great pictures. What kind of camera do you have? Ah, yeah. okay. Don't, don't ever ask that of a photographer. I mean, if you want to get punched out, say that. So it's analogous to the person who goes up to an author and says, ah, that's, a, that's a great book. What, what kind of word processing system do you use? That's right. But it's more indicative. First of all, I don't get angry at that anymore. I, okay. you, with yeah. age, you learn to take it easy and understand the compliment that was behind that. Sure. But it's indicative of a much more greater universal misunderstanding that people think the more expensive the camera, the better the pictures are. And it turns out that's not the case at all. It's your light and composition. That's the reason I started these seminars, to teach people, no, it's not the camera. It's not the camera. Speaking of seminars, you do those all over the world, don't you? We do. Which country do you like the best from a photographer's perspective? Oh, what's, what's the easiest one to take pictures of and most, most photographic from your perspective? I, I don't have a good answer for you. Okay. Um, do, you have a, do you have the worst? I do have a worst. Okay, what's the worst? <laughs> the worst was Namibia. Okay. In Africa. The reason it was the worst was several fold. One, uh, and, and I, I say this with some trepidation, 
when I went there, I discovered it was the Germans that had taken over the entire country. They had suppressed the native culture. They they uh, own all the diamond mines, and they just treat the indigenous people like dirt. So I wasn't I wasn't fond of that. The other thing I didn't like was my attitude. Here I am as a coming in as a, a foreign person, judging another culture by a foreign set of standards, which is just not a a good way to be. Sure. So I wasn't happy with what I saw, and I certainly wasn't happy with myself. Well, Gary, you uh, produce a lot of stock photography as well, don't you? I do. It's what, Friedman? F FriedmanArchives.com. There you go. <laughs> well, at FriedmanArchives.com, you've got a lot of great pictures. I've seen a number of them, and they're just Thank you. tremendous. They can be used for a variety of purposes, and that's why I guess you... I license these license to them. book okay. and magazine editors all over the world. Usually they have a need to... A picture to illustrate an idea. So these are mostly editorial shots, travel shots, anything I, I think of, of shooting, I, I can put it up there. And if it's not there while you're browsing, just search for a keyword because there are thousands of other images that are not browsable. Ah, okay. Well, let's go back to seminars for a minute. Sure. You've traveled the world giving these seminars, but what's in the seminars? Why, why bother? <laughs> and why bother? Yeah, that's another good question. I, I mentioned earlier that there's this huge misunderstanding that people think it's a camera. Mm -hmm. And people think that, oh, if I only got a more expensive camera or a more expensive lens, then maybe my pictures would make right. people say, wow. Right. It turns out it's not true. I took some of my best pictures using that old Minolta SRT 101 uh, film camera, Kodachrome. No post-processing, no Photoshop, uh, no 14-bit RAW to work with. Um, if you can get good images with that, you, can, you don't need the big expensive camera. You don't need the lenses. I teach in day one of the seminar the real secrets to making people say wow, to no matter what kind of camera you have, even if it's a point and shoot. Is, isn't that the point of photography? Wow? That's my goal, is to make people say wow. The other point of photography is to have fun, document your life, enjoy it, and to help explore the world. It gives you an excuse to go out and do things and meet people that you wouldn't normally oh, get sure, a chance to meet. Sure, sure. How long are the seminars? Uh, they're two days. Two days. Day one it just covers creativity and light and composition and doing things that, even if you have a point and shoot, will make people say, wow. And day two is like the graduate course. Uh -huh. F-stops, shutter speeds, all the technical things that everyone wants to know because they think that understanding those things are the key to making wow pictures. I do it because people want to know, but the fact is, because I put the seminars together, day one is the most critical stuff. That's the secrets of the Kodachrome shooters. Forgotten knowledge that nobody talks about anymore. Ah, okay. Well, let me ask you this. For all of those people watching this interview, who are just, you know, point and shoot kind of people, what advice could you give these folks? Best advice? Any advice whatever, whatever for you can. aspiring <laughs> photographers? Whatever camera you have is the camera you want. Go out, explore, enjoy yourself, be creative. Gary, if somebody's interested in buying your book or licensing photography from you or oh. just contacting you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? The main website is freedmanarchives.com, and it's spelled at the bottom of the screen there. From there, you can click on seminars to learn where we're going to be in the world. You can click on e-books, and it has all the dozens of books I've written. Some of the articles are free. Mm -hmm. Some of the videos are there, too. Uh, you can also go and just browse all of the images. Actually, I've done that. Uh -huh. and there's some great images out there. Didn't get much work done that day, did you? No, I didn't. No. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, thanks so much for your time. Thank you we very really much. really appreciate having you. I enjoy you. being here. So there we've heard from Gary Friedman, photographer extraordinary, extraordinary, and one of the things that you'll always remember about Gary is that he can make you understand the most complex things in the simplest way.